and an ensign before the peoples, before whom all kings are mute, to whom the nations will do homage, come quickly to deliver us. Good Jesse, come. O Lord, open my
first reading comes from Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Comfort, comfort my people, says our God, your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry. And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and he will carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those who are with young. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. This is how one should regard us, as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. I am not aware of anything against myself, but I am not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, do not pronounce judgment before the time before the Lord comes, who will bring to, the, to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Then each one will receive his condemnation from God. O Lord, have mercy upon us.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. When John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I say to you, among those born of women there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. By the regenerating power of the Holy Spirit, we are bold to confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and given church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
One of these things is not like the other. St. John, the forerunner, was set apart by prophecy before his birth, descended of the tribe of Levi, of the priests of the kingdom of Israel, but set apart not for the priesthood, but to be a prophet, but also a very peculiar prophet of a certain type that was not allowed to shave and not allowed to cut his hair. He wore camels, camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. He lived in the caves and caverns and crevices out in the wilderness in the rocky crag. His dinner was locusts and honey. He was set apart in all of these unique and interesting ways, forbidden to have alcohol, limited in his diet, limited in his personal care. He was a ruffian. Seriously, if you saw this guy coming, you would have been frightened and intimidated because of our own biases. By the way he looked, by the way he probably smelled, let's be honest, and beyond that, the way that he preached. He did not hesitate but to preach the law. Imagine drawing crowds of people so that you can chew them out over and over again. We see large TV preachers that have these auditoriums filled with people that constantly they're telling them the same thing. I'm okay, you're okay, and gosh darn it, God likes you. John the Baptist said, you brood of vipers, who told you to flee from the wrath to come? To the Pharisees, he said, what are you doing here anyway? To the Sadducees, he condemned them for their apostasy and their taking of bribes. John spoke the truth, and he didn't speak it in the nicest possible way. His district president wouldn't have been very happy with his Twitter account. <laughs> Seriously, he didn't know how to rein it in put the best construction on it when you can't put the best construction on sin, wickedness, and depravity. That was John. Lucy was about roughly 14 years of age, from what we can tell, born into the equestrian class, solidly upper middle class Roman. She would have had an easy life. She would have had a diverse diet. She would never have known the taste of locusts and honey. She would have eaten a lot of boiled innards of various animal parts, but they were the delicacy of the time. She'd also get some goose on a regular occasion and goose eggs. It would have been a soft existence in every measurable sense compared to John's. She might have been literate even among Roman women. She would have had school. She would have had tutors. We don't know the circumstances of when she heard the gospel of Jesus being preached, but she believed it. She believed it in opposition from her own family. She be believed it in opposition from her empire. She held firm to her beliefs, even unto martyrdom. John would go to the dungeon, to calling out the king and his incestuous relationship with his brother's wife. In time, John would lose his head, and it would be delivered on a plate. John would know the physical persecution that comes with being an outsider in a society that had something against the truth, and so would Lucy. Under the supervision of her own family, she would have to be tortured and questioned. In Roman legal society, it would have been her father's job to force her to recant her faith in Jesus. Dad would have overseen her torture in her own home, and they did. Finally, turning her over to the authorities, they threw her to the lions, and the lions wouldn't eat her. They say they tried to chop off of her head three times, but the sword never damaged her neck. What that looks like, we don't know, but the story is the executioner dropped the sword and began repenting. Finally, the physical torture of removing parts of your body, digits, your fingers, your toes, and showing them to you over and over again to make you recant. They say finally when she did not recant, they removed her eyes and put them on a plate. Then they put her in a hot tub and kicked up the fire down the stairs and boiled her to death. Finally, she expired. These two people, who were in every measurable sense not alike, not by age, not by sex, not by language, not by nation, not by, not by their education, not by their diet. In no way, shape, or form would these two people ever have been measured anything alike. 
are actually absolutely alike in this, their confession of Jesus Christ. John died before Jesus even goes to the cross. He's the last of the Old Testament prophets in that sense. John knew that Christ was the Lamb of God who would take away the sin of the world. But at the time his head is removed from his body, Jesus has not atoned yet for the sin of the world. John will see that in the afterlife. Lucy believes in the resurrection and the power that is in Jesus Christ. He, she gladly goes to her death to maintain her eternal life. Faith in the one that delivers to a new creation, new life, and perfection where all is made right and well and perfect, and the universe is only life and love and joy, the real joy, the joys of God that day. What they had absolutely in common was that unshakable faith in Jesus, whether before or after the atonement, whatever part of the world, whatever language, whatever they looked like, sounded like, in every measurable sense, their life not being in any way the same, their death makes them immeasurably the same. Martyrs for the name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Revelation, more than once we are told where the souls of those martyrs are, while the congregation is singing joyfully the victory of the Lamb, the pool under the throne, the pool under the altar, this pool of souls crying out, How long, O Lord, before we are avenged upon the earth? Where all the souls of the martyrs, Old Testament, New Testament, martyrs we don't know and haven't met, memories, martyrs whose memories are completely lost to history, in this place they are remembered, they are known, they are together, they are one, they are unified, and that one thing that draws all people out of the vast polluted ocean of the world and makes them the Lord, that net of the church, of the gospel, that draws them out and makes them one, delivers them to this new pool of perfection and eternity and new life. In every way they were different in this world, but they exited the same by faith in Jesus Christ. Though it may not seem like it, this is the essence then of, of Advent itself. As this church year ended and began with all of that overlap of the passion and the triumphal entry and the judgment day and the return of Jesus, the baby born in the stable and laid in a manger, the child who enters triumphantly into his creation to deliver the people made in his image, the image of the eternal infinite Christ child of Bethlehem, the one who enters into the world to draw out all the faithful, to sift it like wheat, to separate out that which is dark and evil and wicked and sinful for the new creation to dawn. The calling that you and I receive to believe in Jesus is the calling of martyrdom. So to be a martyr means to be a witness. We are lucky we will not bear witness in exactly the same way as either John or Lucy, but our life is a witness. Our life and how we live it, how we lead it, our life being here at church. It is not signified by anything else that we have in our lives, what we have eaten, what we speak, where we're from. It is signified in that unshakable belief in Jesus Christ, God and man, the child who came into the world to deliver us from sin to be ensnared then in his net, which pulls us out of this world and into the next, the very essence of his triumph, that he has entered his creation, sanctified his creation, forgiven the sins of his creation, and will deliver it to eternal perfection in the next life. No matter what we have done, no matter where we are from, no matter our own sin, darkness, and depravity, he will deliver us, because he is faithful, though we are weak. He is pure, but we are wicked. He is the divine child, living, dead, resurrected, ever living, ascended, forever, eternal, here, continually grafting us into him, into the pool, into the congregation, before his altar and throne in eternity, in Jesus' name, amen.
Almighty and everlasting God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and sanctify us by your name through the true teaching of your word and of fervent love. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living which profane your name, preserving us, this parish, and your synod, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Bless our enemies and persecutors. Be with all those who hate you in the gospel of your Son. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ by faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Strengthen us through all our struggles in this world of mutual health, crucifying our wills with Jesus and raising us up with him. Into your merciful hands, commend all those on our prayer list, and especially the Lewis and the O'Neills and their personal love, and all who are in need, entrusting them to your infinite wisdom, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant us strength to persevere in honest and righteous living day to day. Preserve us from greed and selfish cares. Help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Help us by your spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy. Keep us steadfast in that physical grace, your washing of regeneration that we may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with our nation and world, with all those in positions of leadership, authority, and direction. Be with all your people here, keeping all according to your wise counsel and heavenly care, delivering us from all evil of both soul and flesh, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We trust the Lord in your great mercy to love and hear us and answer our prayers. For to you alone we ascribe all glory, honor, and power, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Caught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come.